Chav Dalet Ahmed Base, 24B. And we are um, a few lines from the bottom. Um, this is uh, about 10 lines from the bottom. Lama Mephaisen. Why do we do these lotteries? Amara says, Lama Mephaisen. Why we do the lotteries? Kidakabra. And like we had said, the reason is so because there was pushing and whatever. So there was a need to have the lottery to figure out who does which job. So rather, why do you do it in four different sets of lotteries? Why don't we do one lottery in the whole for everything and, and, and just give out all the jobs at once? to that Rabbi said, in order because each time that creates a an atmosphere in the Azara where uh, there's movement, all the Ghanam come together. And, and, and it creates an excitement. And we want to create within the Beis Amikdash the, uh, uh, the excitement, the movement, and the noise of people running in a certain direction. And all that brings a, a covet lamelech, an honor to Hashem. As it says, Shanemar, um, nam tiksod, together, um, uh, you can translate as we will sweeten the secret. It's not the simple reading. In the house of Hashem, we will go with a emotion, with with um, with a, a rush and a, and an excitement. Very fitting pasuk for this morning. Uh, So, by what was what were the Kohanim wearing when they went to have this lottery done? Were they already in the coins clothing in the in the big day kahuna, or were they still in their personal weekday clothing? And when it says Reb Nachman, I'm a big day Reb Nachman says, yeah, they probably they, they have to be wearing their weekday clothing. And Reb Sheshus, I'm a big day clothing. Reb Sheshus says, no, they need to be wearing their shop, their their um, coins clothing already. From Nachman, I have a big dechol, the mundane clothing, the Amras, the big dechodesh, because if you say it was done in big dechodesh in the holy garments of a kayin, Ikebal Israel is the Chamasi Avni. Well, once everybody's already dressed in in big day kahuna, what you may end up have may end up happening is that a, a, a strong arm uh, uh, kayin is just going to force, even though they lost the lottery, someone else won it, they're going to force their way to do it. So. Uh, they need to, um, uh, therefore, they're they're not yet in their coins clothing, and so there's time, and the person, the other person, will have to get have time to get dressed and go do it. Of Sheshu Sama be big However, Sheshu says no. You have to already be in uh, the um, holy garments of the coin. The Amris be big because you say in the weekday clothing, meaning the mundane clothing, Agav Chavivuse Mikruvavi. They may be so excited that they won the lottery to do the avoid they may just run up and do it when they're not wearing the coin's clothing and they have to be wearing it. They have to do the avoid while wearing Big Day Kahuna. It's Big Day Asrad with the service clothing, right? Amar Nachman Menamino. So Nachman said, How do I know that that's uh, uh, a, a, indeed a concern and uh, that they were they were not yet wearing the clothing of uh, the big day kuna. The Tanan we learned that they would give them over to the uh, chazanim. Chazanim were basically the, the ones in charge of, of the sort of the, the upkeep, the maintenance of what the kahanim were doing, and they would. Uh, so it says that they gave over um, the the. Um, the Kahanam were, were given over um, uh, the Kahanam were handed over to those in charge to help them out. They're serving, basically their custodians. And they would help them remove their garments. And would only leave their, their um, trousers on. 
the 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 big the the part the, the um uh the big the the uh, the the pants yeah the trousers so what is the meaning of this mishnah over there in tummy my love and now we're at the top of hafeyam and aleph uh, at the top my love but it's such as all of a place wouldn't you say that that what the, who's this talking about that they would uh, help him out and and take off his clothing and uh, to to redress him as a coin right so that's a, someone who won the pie is someone who 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 um was chosen in the lottery to do the next of them and he was still dressed in the, the the his personal clothes and so they would help him um take off his clothes so that he could put on the big day, uh, the big day Akodesh, the big day Asra, to serve the service, the, uh, to, to do the Avodah. And so we can then deduce that indeed during the pious, during this lottery, he was not yet wearing his clothing, the coin's clothing. Amar of Yehuda, Amar of Hunab of Yehuda, Amar of Sheshes. However, Rav Hunab of Yehuda said that Rav Sheshes would answer for this. Loi, but it's a Shalai Zachal of that it's talking about those that never, uh, that did not uh, um, uh, win the lottery, and they would be taking off their their coins clothing to put them back into the the their their personal clothes, and they were helping them take off the coins garments, and and, and so that's what's uh, what's uh, what's going on. It's not that they were wearing their personal clothes, and the the, the attendant was helping them get into the the uh, the uh, it was helping them get into the um, uh, big day kahuna, their coins clothing in order to do that but because they won quite the contrary they were all dressed in their coins clothing but only a few of them won so the ones that did not win a job go back to their room and they're being attended to their help to uh, to take off their coins clothing a big day kahuna, in order to be able to get back into their personal coats yes my What's missing for me here, first of all, when they did the pies, so they 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 raffled off a number of jobs. The first one is me term is Truma Sedeshin. And other Kohanim who were who were not chosen for the pies part, part you know ran ran and joined him after he started the Truma Sedesh, after he started the, the first at the first part of the Truma Sedesh, then all the Kohen, the other Kohen came in and joined him. But we know that the clothing that they wore during Truma Sedesh were different. I mean, they had worn, they, they wore work clothes for the Truma Sedesh. And, and, but not- They were, the they were big day clothes. kahuna, but worn out. Right, and not for the other avoidance. So it's not a steer to me that they were that they would have to come and change their clothes. Because after all, if I'm going to go to the pious, maybe I'm going to go. Maybe I'm going to be zayich and or beregel, and that that's that's not going to require me to wear worn out clothing. That's going to wear me. I'm going to wear be wearing my my, my best kohenim clothes to to do that. So you have to change the clothes. The the peop, the person who did true zadesh had to change his clothes into the into the into the work clothes. So it's not a steer that the Chazanim had to change their clothes. Yeah, uh, it, it's it's a great question. And essentially, even regardless of which one was being worn for for one of the uh, for one of the uh, um, avodas for the removal of the ash, we saw already before that he would be wearing uh, the the uh, the worn out garments, right? Something that was not as nice. So. Uh, even though he has to wear big day kahuna. So maybe it's talking about that, that whoever won that avoid, regardless of which one it is, needed help to get into that avoid. Uh, indeed, the Gemara in the end is not going to have proof from this either way, as Tyson points out here. And so ultimately, that, that could be another reason why this is not proof to either way. Very good point. So Rav Sheshes responds, right, that... It, maybe it's the other way around. Everybody wore their big day kahuna for the lottery, for the pious. And um, the ones that won went off to do their avodah. However, the ones that did not get a job came back to change out of the big day kahuna, not to wear it for nothing, and then and, and, and uh, change back into their personal clothes. And they needed help. And that's what this attendant was doing. And it's actually quite logical. 
the Esau Kedaitach Ba'isa Shazachal Apayis, because if it's the ones who, uh, if it's like what you, uh, you said, Rav Nachman, that everybody was in their personal clothes, and then they were helping them get into their, uh, into their uh, uh, Avoda clothes, into their big day kahuna, well, uh, then why would they leave his trousers on? Why does it say that they would leave his trousers on? Actually, the first thing that needs to be uh, put on of the big day kahuna is his trousers. As it says, it says, and the uh, the trousers of linen should be on his flesh, on his on his body. So we see that that's the first of the clothing that need to put, be put on. So if you are uh, or Nachman is uh, correct uh, that uh, uh, that uh, the the pious was done in personal clothes, and this attendant was there to help the whoever won. Well, why would they leave their trousers on? That's the first that has to be changed. The Edoch, how does Rabbi Nachman respond to that? That's not our question. It's exactly what that price means. First, while his weekly clothes, his personal clothes were on, they would change out of their, their uh, uh, personal trousers into, and, and they would put on the Kodesh trousers. And then once he's wearing the the uh, uh, linen uh, trousers of, of uh, Kohen, that's when they would switch out the rest of the garments to, for the four garments. Um, and then uh, the, what the statement of this Brisa, of the Mishnah there, that they would cha- help him change out, and uh, all that was left on were his uh, trousers. And the reason that was done was for 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 uh, uh, for, for uh, dignity. And so he, he would, they, while he was still wearing his weekday garments, uh, they, would, they would put on the, the coin's trousers and then take off the rest of his garments and put on the uh, coin's garments. But there's no proof from that alone, from the fact that his trousers were left on, that he wasn't wearing them, the, the coin's trousers. In any case, um, so Reb Nachman tried to bring proof from this Mishnah, no proof. The Gemara says no proof either way. And as Michael pointed out, really there's another way to explain the Bryce set to begin with. Amar of Sheshes Manaminilla. Rav Sheshes says, How can I prove to you that he was wearing the, the coin was wearing the big day kahuna for the uh, for the lottery? Manaminilla, the tiny we learned in the Brysa. Lishka Sagazis Kamin Basiliki Gadot. The Lishka Sagaz is the, the seat of the high court of the Sanhedrin, the great Sanhedrin, uh, was um, a, a, a room called the Lishka Sagaz, the hewn stone, um, uh, the, the hewn stone room. Um, and the, the room itself, um, as Michael pointed out to me, and I've been doing a little bit of research since, that there, it's unclear where this, where this room was. The imagery that we have uh, of the uh, of the Beis Hamikdash has the ha- has the uh, the um, is basically from the uh, the Mishnayis uh, Yachan um, from the from the Beis and, and 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 there we have um, the Lishkas Agazis on the uh, north eastern wall of the Beis HaMikdash. Uh, in being on the northeastern wall, this next line in Gemara is going to be really difficult. Uh, how, how, um, however, there are those that, uh, in, in the Rishonim already, that have another image where it's actually on the northwestern corner, and this Gemara would fit better with that. Either way, wherever it was, it was on the northern wall, and that's where the seat of the uh, the base of the uh, Sanhedrin was. So it was this large basilica, uh, a lar- this large room, uh, uh, and it was on an upper floor. The pious, the um, uh, the the lottery was to the on the eastern part of the of the room. 
and the elder was sitting on the western side of the room. So it was a long, large room, and the 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 head of the, the Sanhedrin, the elder, is on the far uh, uh, western side of the room, or on the western side of the room, and the kahanim in the pious in the lottery are on the eastern side of the room. And the kahanim are standing in a circle like a buchlier, which is a uh, um, a, a certain a, a part of, of the of the uh, weaving process, a tool, and and they, it was basically they were in a circle. And the mamuna, the, the one in charge who is going to do the lottery, stands in the middle of this circle. And he takes the hat off of one of them so that they, it, it, it would know, he would know who he started with. So this way he knows where it started with, that just in case the number, he forgets where his count is, he can start again. He knows where he started. The, now, uh, um, the Gemara interrupts this, Bryce, and says, wait, if you think that, he, that everybody who's wearing their personal clothing so what kind of mitznefes, uh, uh, this hat, the coin's hat, was would he be wearing? The mitznefes is a title, it was a, is a term for the for the um, head covering that the kahanim wore. It's basically like a turban, uh, uh, and and that that's something kahanim wore. So clearly they were already in the big day kahuna, and that's why they took off the mitznefes, so it's proof that they were already in the big day kahuna. In so Gemara says, no, it's possible that in his personal clothes there were also mitznefes. Because the Tanur Rabbi Yehuda, the Tamer Rabbi Shmuel Rabbi Yehuda, as Rabbi Yehuda and some say Rabbi Shmuel Rabbi Yehuda said, Kain shasa leima exodus, and Kain his mother and pride uh, or pride of her son going to do the avodah and beis made a a uh, uh, a garment for him like the big day kahuna to show his beauty. So he would come in and, and to show him off the the. That he's already a coin. His mother may made for him this special garment that's like the big dekuna, and uh, uh, um, uh, and he could sanctify it and use it for personal avoid in the base of So it could be he's coming in with that, wearing it for his personal avoid, and he has a mitznefes that his mother made that looks like the big dekuna, because. Um, his mother made him a shirt. He can do his uh, 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 the, uh, uh, individuals for it, not the communal avoda. In any case, so so we see that he can wear it. So maybe his mother made him a mitznefes, like the big dekuna, to show that he's a kohen going to do the avoda, and he could, and that's what he was wearing, and that's what's going on. Now, obviously, that's going to be a, a a difficult interpretation because. Yes, it's possible that would happen, but you you wouldn't say that that's the typical way the coin is going to know where to start the lottery uh, if not everybody was wearing it. But nevertheless, it's possible that he would have it. Amar Abaya Shmamina. However, Abaya says from this uh, uh, brisa we have another teaching. Shmamina lishkas agaz is chetzia bekodesh vechetzibachol. We learn from this that the lishkas agaz was half in the kodesh. And half in the chol, half of it was sanctified as part of the base of mikdash, and half not. And also, what we learn is that there were two entrances to the lishkas to this uh, 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 Sanhedrin room. One opening from the holy, from the kodesh, and one from the chol. Why? How do we know this? The If you say the entire room. Of the uh, 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 of the Lishkas Agazis was in the holy, uh, uh, in a part sanctified as a part of the base of Mikdash. Can't be. Zakin Yeshiv Arava. It says that the elder was sitting on the western side. Now, if he's sitting, we can't be sitting in, in, in the Azara, in the Kodesh. No one can sit in the Azara. No one's allowed to sit in the Azara besides four Elamachi basis David Bovad, only kings of the household of David. But no one else, you're not allowed to sit. A koin, the koin gadol, uh, no one. No one is allowed to sit in the uh, Azara. So the, for sure the Sanhedrin head or the Sanhedrin, they wouldn't be sitting in the Azara. So half the room has to not be sanctified. Which half? The Western half. 
Now, maybe the entire thing is not sanctified. Maybe it's all choyl. That, well, that's, that, that's a problem with that book. Because the way why? they've got it set up, everything is Bakoidish. No, the, the Western side is, is not in the Kodesh. This is more, right. this Gemara actually is evidence to the book. Because the way, the, way the, the, the typical imagery has it, where it's on the northwestern, northeastern side of the Azara, right? Yep, right? So, so yeah. from the northeastern uh, uh, side of the Azara, what ends up happening is that the, the non Kodesh side is on the west, which would be in the Azara. Right, because it's on the northeastern corner, and the eastern side of the room, which is over non Kodesh, is 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 the sanctified part, is the Kodesh part, and that doesn't make sense because if it's on the northeastern corner, so then the western part of that room is over the Kodesh, and the eastern part of the room is non sanctified, and yet in in this Brisa the, in the Gemara it has it the the other way round. However, the way that book has it. And the way Mari Trani the, the, and, and, and other Rishonim have it, where the, the Lishka Sagaz is on the northwestern corner. So the westernmost part of that room is not in the Azara. And that's where the Sadhadrin would sit because they can sit there. And the eastern part of that is in the Azara where the pious would be done. My, my so, recollection is it, the, whole, the whole Lishka Sagaz was in the Azara, according to that picture. And the, no, and the, and the normal... oh, no, only, only the southeastern corner of the room the there's like an l shape of it outside of the azar in any case the the this gemara is difficult to interpret according to the uh, classic inventory where it's in the n- northeast corner uh, in any case so the gemara says uh, the the even uh, even the coin god could have said in the azar for sure the sanhedrin wouldn't sit there so must be that uh, the western part of the room which is where the coin where the uh, elder would be sitting was non-sanctified. It was non-Kodesh. And if you say that it's all in non-sanctified, also can't be. Because pious b'marocha. The pious, the lottery, was done on the, on the eastern side of the room. And that has to be done in the Beis HaMikdash. Or in the Azara. The entire reason we said we have multiple rooms, multiple pies, and multiple lotteries in order that the Beis Amikdash should be uh, alive and the Azara is, 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 uh, is being, you know, uh, there's a rush in there and there's something going on. That means that the Gemara had said that the, the lottery was taking place in the courtyard, in the Beis Amikdash itself. Well, uh, the Lekka. If, if the entire room is non-sanctified, it's not a part of the Beis HaMikdash, so you don't have that happening in the Beis HaMikdash. So we're going to have to say that half of the room, the easternmost part of the room, is in the Beis HaMikdash, in the Azara. And the westernmost part of the room where the, where the elder is sitting is not in the Beis HaMikdash. Okay, so we now have established that the room is split, half in the Kodesh, half not, or part in the Kodesh, part not. And if you're going to tell me that it only has one entrance, we know the halacha is that any room, wherever it's open to, gets the status of that room. Of that, uh, the room gets that status. So if it's open to the Kodesh, the room is Kodesh. If it's open to the Chol, to the, to the uh, Temple Mount, not sanctified, so then uh, the, the room is not sanctified. So Pesuach Kodesh, because Pesuach Kodesh. If because if you're going to tell me that it, it has one door and it's open to the azara to the courtyard, so that means that it's sanctified like the courtyard. How could the elder sit on the east, western side? But now we learn how all the chambers, if they were built in the mundane, even though they're over the airspace of the non-sanctified part, nevertheless, if they're open to the kodesh, to the kodesh. There, that space will be counted as Kodesh in the Azara. Now, uh, is, therefore, it cannot be that it only had a door, one door to the Kodesh. And the same vice versa. If you're going to say it only had one door to the, to the Temple Mount, to the Harabais, Visaka, Tatra, Pesuach, Lechoyl, Pais, Bemizrach, again, the, the, the wet eastern side, which had the Pais, would not be sanctified because of Tanan, Benuyas, Bekodesh, Pesuch, Lechoyl, Techachol, even if it's over the Azara. Even if it's over the courtyard of the Beis Hamikdash, 
if its only door is open to the to the Temple Mount, which is non-sanctified like the courtyard, then it would not be sanctified. And the in the inner part of that room, even though it's over the airspace of the uh, of the base of Mikdash, the room would be non-sanctified. So therefore, we have to say there were two doors, which would not automatically sanctify any part of the room. And then the half was uh, part was sanctified. That's where the the pious the lottery to, uh, took place, and part was non-sanctified, and that's where the Sanhedrin would sit. Because one open to the Kodesh and one open to the Chol. Mishnah. The second lottery, Hapayas Asheni. The second lottery is Mishachit. Who would do the Shechita? Mizurik. Who would spritz the blood on the Mizbeach? Mimedasha Mizbeach Apanimi. Who would take off the uh, the uh, the ash? Would cl- clean off the the uh, inner uh, Mizbeach, the Mizbeach in the Beis Hamikdash, the golden Mizbeach. Mimedasha Nasamenora. Who? Uh, takes off the the um, ash or the, the 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 wicks from the menorah to fix it. Mi male evorim and who would take up the limbs to the mizbech? Now there are a whole set of limbs. One harosh varegel, the head and the right hind leg. and the the two front legs, the hands. Right ukets. Uh, and the the ukets and the regel is the the uh, tail and the left hind leg. The brisket, the, the chest and the throat. The two uh, the two sides the, the two um, sides of the animal flanks. and the innards. And who will bring the flower, the meal offering? Vachavitin, and the 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 coins, uh, um, uh, the the coin gadol's daily offering of the of the chavitin of the meal offering. Vayayin, and the wine. So this is thirteen kahanim. Shloisha asar kahanim zachaboy. Thirteen kahanim would have uh, uh, won this uh, lottery. Amar ben Azai, lefnei Rabbi Akiva. Meshum Rabbi Yeshua. Ben Azai taught in front of Rabbi Akiva in the name of Rabbi Yeshua. Derech ilucha yekarv. That it would, the way they would bring these parts were in the order of the the way the animal would walk. So the head first and then uh, the neck and chest, and etc. Yes, Mike. This is, just to point out, this is only for a lamb. There were more involved for the larger animals, for a, for a ram or for right, a right, the, right now we're talking, right, correct. We're talking about the morning offering of the tamid, which was a lamb. Thank you, man. Ibayelu, kashem mefaisin, lavei de achas mefaisin, oidel melechal avei de avei de mefaisin. How would they make this lottery? Would it be for one um, and, and, and whoever won they, they they got the first job and then and then they would just go give the next twelve people uh, uh, the next twelve uh, jobs. So was it a single lottery? And then once they stopped, okay, so you get the first one, you get to do shchita. You the next get zrika. The next you get to do dishum um, mizbeach The next you get and so they would just go through. Once they stopped. The next, the, that person and the next 12 get all the jobs, or they would make a lottery for each. Okay, we stop, you get job number one. Now let's do it again. You get job number two. And now let's do it again. You get job number three. Tashima, come in here. Arba Paisa says that there were four lotteries. If you tell me that for each one, of the jobs, they would have another lottery. Well, then there's 13 right here, right? Tuva have it, so there would be more. Rabbi Nachman said, no, that's not a, 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 a good proof at all. Uh, our, the, the meaning of that, uh, uh, of the Arba Paisas, that there were four lotteries, means this. Arba Pavim Nechnasin Lafis, four times they would do the ceremony of, of, of uh, lottery. They would go in to do the lottery four times. Each one of the times, they would do a lottery for multiple things. But there were four 
times of lottery. So these 13 count as one because in one sitting or standing, they did uh, all of these. But within one, each one of the four, there were multiple things that they did a lottery for. Now, so uh, uh, Rabbi Yehuda said, the 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 rice teachers Rabbi Yehuda said that they didn't do a separate lottery for the one who would who would bring the uh, the coals for the k'tores and the one who would bring the 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 um, the, the incense itself because uh, it, they you needed both. Rather, they would stop for the one who did the k'tores, and then he would say to the one to the right of him, "Come and join me, and you'll carry the 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 uh, machta, the pan of coals." So you see that uh, that it was uh, done together. No, maybe that's because it's all for one particular service. But in our Mishnah, we have different things going on. One would clean the mizbeach. Uh, the inner mizbeach, which was different than uh, than the shechita and the zrika, so those are uh, maybe there's a different lottery for each one. Some say quite the contrary. Only those two. Uh, the proof is the other way around. That only those two, because they're actually one 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 avoda. Avol shar avodas bei pious, but uh, other avoda, other. Um, uh, the indication of the Bryce is only those two because they're actually one service. So he would tell the next guy, okay, now you're the next coin to join me and bring the Mahta. But in any other Avoida, like in our Mishnah, the 13 of them, each one of them would get a separate lottery. So Igmar says, no, really, everybody gets one lottery and then the next people get the, uh, get the jobs. However, why, is, why over here do we need to tell you that the one who has the Mahta is... Uh, uh, the, that the one who wins the the k'tores, the next one brings the pan. It's rechalei saka that the because I may have thought hoyavalish uh, chichi uh, since it's not common, right? Because as we saw that um, uh, um, the 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 k'tores was uncommon, and they would get people who had never had a chance. And the reason is because you it, it it's one of it's the only avoda that you can never really donate. There's only time you bring a lamb could be brought any time of the day. People could bring a shlomim, people could bring an ola, people bring a chatas. But uh, this, the k'tores, was only done uh, on a particular, uh, 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 you know, a particular time. It's very set, once in the morning, once in the evening. And umiyatra, and there was a blessing of wealth for whoever gets to do it. So nitka lapayis bifniyatzma, therefore it has its own lottery and uh, therefore, I think the machta also the second part there should have its own lottery, and therefore kamash malan that no even that one even the special job of the kataris it just went to one person and the next person next. So we don't have proof whether it was done in a uh, one lottery and then the next thirteen the, the, the thirteen people get it or there were thirteen separate drawings. Tashema the taner rebchia lechal avid of avidim afaisin. Well, rebchia has a price that says. You wouldn't do it for each particular job a separate pious. Elakayin shazacha betamid, the one who got the merit of the tamid. Shnei masayachav kahanim nimshachim imoy. The twelve next kahanim are get get pulled in with him. So it's one lottery. You wherever he stops, that coin shechts the tamid, the 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 morning lamb for the daily offering, and from there you count the next twelve get the next twelve jobs. So pious hasheni. The second lottery, it says first one is shechting and the next is spritzing of the blood. Well, there's two particular jobs after that. There's a shechting, receiving the blood, bringing the blood to the mezbech, and then spritzing it. So we have someone who wins the shechting job and we have someone who wins the, the, uh, the spritzing job. But what about the receiving of the blood? Is that a part of the shechting job or part of the spritzing blood job? Iam, um, is it the one, the, the one who shechts, he receives the blood? Because if the one that spritzes the blood is the one that does it, because he's so excited to do it, he won't patiently wait until all the blood is in the vessel. He'll run off beforehand and uh, in order to do the spritzing, and he won't receive all the blood that's necessary. Or perhaps the other way around. 
the one who's receiving is the one who has to spritz, uh, spritz the blood. The Avon Shecher Mechabah, because if you're going to say the Shecher is the one who receives the blood, Zimn the Shechet Zar. Well, actually, uh, we, we've talked about this, that that even though that they would do a lottery for for the Shechet, uh, but the Halacha is actually that a non coin is also allowed to Shechet. And so sometimes that may happen, that a non coin Shechet, it, and he's not allowed to receive the blood, so it can't be that the receiving of the blood belongs to the shochet because the shochet actually doesn't have to be a koinim. Tashema ben katan asa yud bei dan lekiar kadeshi yud bei zachav kahanim asukim matamid mekatchin yadei. So it says that ben katan built the the basin, the kiar for washing the hands and feet that the kahanim would have to do prior to the avoda. There were twelve. Uh, there were twelve faucets, twelve spigots on them. And the reason for that is so that the 12 kahanim who had the morning avoda can at once go and wash their hands and they wouldn't have to wait in, a, in the line to do it. Now, and if you tell me that the one who shechts is also the one who receives the blood, so he would also have to wash his hands. have it. Then it would be 13 that need it because the shechet, there are 13 lotteries, right? That means that the job of the shechting is also a job of receiving the blood. And um, uh, now the shechting does itself, doesn't need kiddush yudai v'raglai, doesn't need that the coin would have washed his hands and feet beforehand because um, because it's a type of avoida that a non coin is allowed to do. So therefore he doesn't have to wash his hands and feet beforehand. Only the jobs that only a coin may do requires kiddush yudai v'raglai. So, if the shechet only does shechting, which a, koi, a non-koin is allowed to do, so we understand why he wouldn't have to wash his hands and feet. And therefore, there were only the next 12 jobs, the next 12 kahanim were the ones that have to wash their hands and feet. So therefore, the kior, the basin, only had 12 spigots. However, if you're going to tell me that the 13, that, that the one who did the shechting also did the receiving of the blood, so that only a coin is allowed to do. And therefore, he would have to wash his hands and feet beforehand as well. So that we, that he should have built a basin with thirteen, uh, 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 with with uh, thirteen faucets. And lalav shmami nazarik mekabel must be that the one who spritzes the blood is the one who's receiving the blood, and therefore the one who who shechts the kain who shechts does not have to wash his hands and feet beforehand. There was no space for him at the basin. He would just go ahead and shecht um, directly uh, because it's uh, it's kosher even with a non kohen. So Ravacha said to Ravashi, indeed, we have a brisa like this. The shechter shechted, and the receiver received, and then he would go at, to the to Mizbeach to spritz. Shmamina, indeed, we see that the shechet and the one who received the blood are two different people, and the one who received the blood is the one who spritz it on the Mizbeach. Indeed, that's good proof. The next Gemara is going to get, tell us multiple opinions as to how the uh, the order of the parts of the carbon would go on the Mizbeach. So Ben Azai said that in the manner within it which it walks is the way that its parts would go. So the head first, then um, um, then the neck, and and each each part, the the, the legs. The front legs, the hind legs, etc. So, Ketza Now, the what what's clear is nobody's disagreeing in regards to what goes as a set, as a pier. The head and the and, and the hind right, the right hind leg always go together. Everybody agrees to that. The the um, the chest, the brisket, and the and and the neck go together. Everybody agrees to that. The two front legs go together. Everybody agrees to that. The hind left left hind leg and the tail go together. Everybody agrees to that. Um, the question is only what order they are going. in. So the Brisa taught. Ketza derech hiluchet. What is the manner of uh, the way derech uh, the way it goes? Harosh regel. So first would be the head, and along with it comes the right hind leg. Achaz of then the neck and the uh, and the chest, because that's next in the way the animal would walk. Head, neck, chest. Ushteya and then the two front legs. Ushteya and the two 
um, walls of the, uh, basically the torso walls. And then the tail and the right hind leg. However, it actually wouldn't be brought that way, but rather the way it would be brought is the way it would be skinned. So how does that work? Uh, how would it, what, what order would that be? So first goes the head and the right hind leg. Then the left hind leg together with the tail, because skinning always uh, comes from the back of the, the animal. And then the, then the two walls of the torso. The two front legs. And then the, the brisket and, and, and uh, neck. Rabbi Akiva Yemer, Derech Nituch Hayayakar. No, the way they would do it is the way that you would actually um, uh, butcher the animal, the way you would cut it up. Karev, uh, uh, that's the way it was brought. Ketzad, and what manner is that? Derech Nituch, that you would, the way you would cut it. So, Aresh Varegel, the head and the right hind leg. Shteyadayim, the two front legs. Echazav Agera, the, uh, the, uh, the uh, uh, breast and neck. Shteyadayim, the, uh, Two uh, uh, torso walls. Well, look at Svaregel, the left hind leg and the tail. Rabbi Yisai Galilia, I mean, and Rabbi Yisai Galilia says actually no. The way you would do it is Derech Iluya Hayakarif. That it, 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 the best parts would go first. Ketzat, and what's that? Derech Iluya. What would count as the best parts? Harish Svaregel. Again, the first is the head and the tail and the right hind leg. Hechazav Agera. Then the brisket and the neck. Then, the two torso walls, and then the, uh, the tailbone and le- the tail of the left uh, uh, and the left hind leg, and the least, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the least um, uh, desirable part uh, is the two front legs. And when it says, and it says, and it says, it says the best, uh, uh, the best cuts the the uh, leg and the and the shoulder. That's talking about uh, a, a a weak animal, uh, meaning um, uh, the the uh, alien by, by by rams by better animals. It's going to be up. In any case, tomorrow we'll will go through what counts as the best parts and what the basis is for this machlokas of where, how to break it up and also why the head always goes first. Yeshikach, everybody. And it really, really uh, cannot uh, tell you how much this community means to me.